So here we are at the fourth element of Rua, the final element, which is humour. And for Don Bosco, that wasn't about the ability to tell jokes. It was about being able to enjoy life and to enjoy life, especially in the playground. That was essential, that young people had time and energy, as Don Bosco said, to jump and run and have a great time but never ever sin and so for us in Silesian education whatever the setting whether it be a school whether it be an oratory whether it be a youth center whether it be a parish there must be an element of fun there must be an element of humor so that young people can grow up in a rounded and full way and so as we stand here on Marsh Lane next to the Jamie Carragher mural across the road from the Brunswick Youth Centre we realise that fun and humour is central to what we as Salesians do and what Steve will be doing in his ministry. So we're here in the city of Liverpool we're down at the Albert Docks and I'm a Liverpool boy I'm a brutal boy but I'm a Liverpool boy and Liverpool is the city of culture the city of love the city of rock and roll, if you like. You think of the Beatles, you think of Scylla Black, you think of Liverpool Football Club, Everton Football Club. Liverpool's well known for so many different amazing things. And this is my city. This is the city I grew up. This is the city I found out how to be somebody of hospitality, somebody of love, but also somebody that loves his hometown. It's Liverpool the city of love. We've come down to Crosby Beach and Crosby Beach is where I used to come as a child with my friends, with my cousins, and we would play. We would play, just like Don Bosco wanted his young people to play. We would play. We would play in the sand. We would play in the sea. It was a great place for us just to relax, particularly as I got older after exams, coming down here to walk, walk along the beach, walk down to the sea, and... Um, as a youngster as well, we would gather here as friends, we would gather here on summer camps and we'd just have fun. That was the beauty of coming down to Crosby Beach. You could forget what was happening, forget everything else and just enjoy the beauty of the beach, the beauty of the boats coming in and forget what life was offering you and just enjoy yourself really. So Bootle is a beautiful town to live in and I've grown up here all my life, but someone famous, more famous than me, grew up here and is a dedicated member of the Bootle community and that is Jamie Carragher and you can see the catchphrase there, give kids a chance. So Salesian, as a past pupil of our Salesian school, a past parishioner of our parish church, but he still in his heart has that Salesian root. He has that Don Bosco message that he wants to share with young people. He wants to give the kids on the streets, the kids of Bootle, a chance to get to Istanbul, get to America, or get to wherever they want to be in their lives. Jamie's a great fan of our Salesian family and he's a great person to be inspired by the Salesian community. So we're standing here at the Brunswick Youth and Community Centre. To me, it's the Brunny. This is where I came as a kid. I came to play in the youth club. We played um, pool, different sports. I'm not a sportsman. I didn't really go into the gym, but I was here. I did different um, computer stuff. And I went on a lot of different residentials. So not just church, but also my local community. I found a lot of inspiration from people like Keith Lloyd and his mum, uh, Kathy Lloyd, who was also a dinner lady in my primary school. So great inspiration from great people and this place being a great place for me where I grew up in my playground. This is my playground, the Bruni. 
So here I am in the beautiful garden of St. James's Beetle, where, if you remember, David, when you were younger, we had many fun times. Yes. Marquees were in here. We used to have playgrounds, <coughs> football matches, all kinds of things. So it was a really, really good time. So we've got David, we've got Sam. You're both members of the FMA organisation, VDES. Perhaps, you know, you could just give us a quick explanation about VDES and how you met Steve through VDES. Yeah, absolutely. Um, VDES UK is an organisation that is run with and for young people around the world. Uh, initially, it was started to promote the education of young women, but now we focus a lot more on human rights in general, the right of education for all, the right of freedom of expression, freedom of speech, um, and our projects that we run with young people are uh, like a summer scheme, play scheme element. Um, and we focus a lot on human rights education with teenagers aged 13 to 16 and do a lot more play school type stuff with ch young people aged 8 and upwards. And we've got a project that takes place in Wales at the moment annually called Vida's Anima. Excellent. Now David, when you were here as a youngster in the yep. parish with Steve, you were part of a VDES project that we had actually in the parish. We had a, an awful lot of fun, a lot of games, a lot of uh, humour yeah. because of what you were trying to do. Yeah, so um, I, and I suppose Steve as well, we both kind of met, well, we kind of met VDES through when they were here, running one of those kind of summer schemes that Sam just spoken about. So I, I was around 10, so Steve would have been around 12 or 13. Um, and that was really for us a really simple introduction to that idea of that element of fun and then kind of from there we've been able to delve a little bit deeper um, lots of the trips and things that happen on those camps are again ex about exploring those different challenges that people face but also about just kind of having that like team building fun together as well exactly. <coughs> and one of the nice things i think about this parish in particular is that although the vdes team has gone the actual work of fun and play, especially during the summer break, continues through yeah, people definitely. like your mum and your dad. Yeah. They're continuing that work through the Youth Active Week that they have here. Yeah, and I think that's always kind of been part of the mission and aim of VDES, that they go to an area for a while, and then the idea is that the area kind of picks that up. And it's really nice to see that that spirit has kind of been, has stayed, as you say, and has been picked up by somebody else um, to keep giving our young people those opportunities. Excellent. Now, David, you've known Steve a long time, a long time, yeah. yes, <laughs> since your, your school days. Um, what kind of memories do you have of him at school, at primary school, at secondary school? Um, I think, although I've known Steve for a long time, we were kind of separating age, so he's a couple of years older than I am. Um, I think some of the memories of him are quite of a cheeky chappy, um, <laughs> <laughs> but definitely somebody I think who within that sort of knew himself quite well and sort of was very well respected by everybody. Um, one of these, I was kind of trying to think back of when I first really remember being around Steve and it was actually when he was an altar server here at St. James. And at the end of mass, I was still a little bit too young. So I just run in and annoy them all. And I think Steve's kind of last the memory of that was, please go away and come back when you're two years older. So like, again, maybe that cheeky crappy idea is sort of where Brilliant. I sit. I think Brilliant. that carries on as well. So by the time I joined the VDES, <coughs> Steve was already off starting his adventure to become Brother Stu. Um, but the name was very was spoken of very fondly. The reputation of that cheeky chappy character was very much there. And I think that's true of a lot of VDES volunteers. We come along and the communities we go we go into, we do tend to get those young people who, you know, maybe need a little bit of a cage to break out of and they're given the freedom and the space to do so. And then we develop into adults who are still a little bit cheeky from <laughs> time to time. And we definitely see that in Steve still now. Um, so I think it helps us to foster those relationships where we can be a little bit silly with each other, but we can also get to that deeper level of friendship, faith and fun. Um, so that for me is really what Vida's has gifted us in terms of our friendship with Steve. Um, but again, you've known him a lot longer than I have. <laughs> and I'm here with Jerry Keel, who is a friend of the Salesian province, friend of a lot of our Salesians in the province, but also works for the Bishops Conference. Jerry's also a past pupil of our school here at Battersea. And Jerry's here to share a little bit of our friendship. We've been friends for a while, and Jerry's going to share a little bit about his Salesian experience, but also um, our connection as Salesian friends. So, Jerry, how are you? 
Steve, it's lovely to be here. It is amazing. I was just thinking the last time I would have sat on this lawn would have been some 40 odd years ago uh, when this was the lawn of then the Slesian College. And it's almost exactly in the same position. I remember we used to play in the Arm and in fact the statue of Mary Help Christians is uh, still the same statue, although now in a new position. And I was just thinking as we were chatting before this, how inspirational the young brothers were in that era. And I remember particularly, and I think many people will have talked about Brother Joseph, who was not young, in fact was very elderly then, uh, and whose presence around the college was absolutely inspirational. It was very quiet, very unassuming, very kindly, presence in the chapel which would have just been slightly over to the left of us now. And I remember thinking what a powerful role model uh, this was, that presence with those young people. And it is amazing now, 40 odd years later, uh, to be in the presence of a young Salesian brother, soon to be father, who I too have to say, although I suspect your, your humility will, will not like, you, like hearing, that how inspirational you too have been, in that you have brought through the various projects that I've been involved with, the work with the relics of Don Bosco 10 or so years ago, the work building up to and following on from the bicentenary of Don Bosco, how you have brought to that a new energy and enthusiasm and something that I saw all of those years ago in those very faithful Salesians and how you are now capturing that spirit and bringing that on into a new era and a new age. And particularly as those Salesians that I would count as good friends now are all, like I, getting older and tireder. But to see someone bringing energy, passion for those same Salesian values that have inspired so many people is absolutely inspirational. And I think as you prepare for ordination, that is such a gift to the province and also to the church more widely. And through the work that I do for the Bishop's Conference, seeing the church across England and Wales, there is such a, a desperate need for people who are prepared to make the commitments, who live normal lives, but normal lives that are deeply holy and spiritual, and who, through their own commitment, will inspire others. And I think you will. I have no doubt, and I suppose sitting on this beautiful summer's afternoon next to the statue of Mary Help of Christians, having just celebrated her feast, is really inspirational. And I wish you the very, very best uh, as the ordination approaches. Thank you.